Come, divine Messiah, the world in silence waits the day when hope shall sing its triumph and sadness flee away. Dear Savior, haste, come, come to earth, dispel the night and show your face and bid us hear the dawn of grace. O oh, come, divine Messiah, the world in silence waits the day when hope shall sing its triumph and sadness flee away. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. On this fourth Sunday of Advent, which also is Christmas Eve, we come to this final moment in the season of Advent to once again prepare our hearts to welcome the Lord. Let us do so by offering to him our own frailty and need of forgiveness, trusting in his mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are our hope and our salvation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us Forgive us all of our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ, your Son, was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. When King David was settled in his palace, and the Lord had given him rest from his enemies on every side, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am, living in a house of cedar, while the ark of God dwells in a tent. Nathan answered the king, Go, do whatever you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that night the Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go. Tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, should you build me a house to dwell in? It was I who took you from the pasture and from the care of the flock to be commander of my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you went, and I have destroyed all your enemies before you. And I will make you famous like the great ones of the earth. I will fix a place for my people Israel. I will plant them so that they may dwell in their place without further disturbance. Neither shall the wicked continue to afflict them as they did of old, since the time I first appointed judges over my people Israel. I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord also reveals to you that he will establish a house for you. And when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. I will sing forever of your mercies, O Lord. Through all ages my mouth will proclaim your fidelity. I have declared your mercy is established forever. Your fidelity stands firm as the heavens. Forever I will see thy goodness of the 
with my chosen one I have made a covenant. I have sworn to David my servant. I will establish your descendants forever and set up your throne through all ages. Forever I will see the goodness of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, to him who can strengthen you, according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret for long ages, but now manifested through the prophetic writings and according to the command of the eternal God, made known to all nations to bring about the obedience of faith. To the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what he said and pondered what sort of greeting this might mean. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, how can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her, who is called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. We have now come to the final week of our preparation for Christmas on this fourth Sunday of Advent, with tomorrow being Christmas. And Mary is the one who reflects for us what should be happening inside of us, what kind of new growth in life we should see, what grace the Lord is giving us in order to be more fully Christian. For she is the first of all Christians, the one who knew and accepted Jesus the longest in history. And we see, first of all, that Mary is attentive. She has this sense of expectation. She doesn't seem overly surprised by the message of the angel, by the visit of the angel. There is a sense of expectation about her. It's a kind of expectation maybe that a child has as, they're, as he or she is waiting for a father or mother to return home from a gift and asking, what is it that you brought me? 
How are you blessing me? Mary can have this because she is one who we hear is full of grace, a term that scripture scholars tell us means, I have loved you a very long time. She has this sense that she is loved, and so she has an expectation about life. That can be so different from the way that we live our lives, thinking as though they're this one dull day after another. Can we live with a sense of expectation that God is always doing something new in our lives, no matter what our age, no matter our circumstance, and has not left us behind, simply because he has loved us for a very long time. And the second thing that we see is that a lot of is, is expected of her, the extraordinary, to be a mother, not having known or had relations with a man. Also, she's the betrothed of Joseph. How can all of this happen? It'd be very easy for her to present obstacles, to make excuses, to beg off and say, no, this is too much for me. And yet Mary is someone that we learn in the scriptures who doesn't shy away from doing the extraordinary, who doesn't see these extra demands as a burden, but rather as an honor. All generations will call me blessed, she says in the Magnificat. So too, when people make demands on us, when we seem to be stretched because we have so much going on and yet someone else is in need, our first inclination may be to beg off, to say it's, no too, it's too much. I think of people who family members where maybe an aging parent needs more assistance and they pitch in to help, or a spouse who in some way must sacrifice themselves in order to care for their partner in life, or parents who have a sick child. So much is expected, and yet down deep, they see that work not so much as a burden, but as an opportunity to love more, as an honor, as Mary did. And so too for us, people make demands on us, we should not shy away from them, especially if we can do something to help them, but be generous, not because we feel a sense of guilt, but rather it's an honor to be of assistance. And finally, we see that Mary is one who is responsive. She not only is attentive to the Lord working new things in her life, but she has a sense of responsibility. She believes and has this sense that the Lord is asking her to participate in something great and in that way to be responsible. Each one of us as well have the obligation in life to see beyond our own needs, our own wants, but truly be responsible. Responsible for our environment as we see global warming about what we can do to make sure that our our, our, our whole created reality is not damaged further. The sense of responsibility for the life of the church, which I hope people will really grab a hold of by coming to Mass on Christmas Day in their parishes as a means by which they can show support for that community. Or the responsibility as well that, that we have for a peaceful and good society, for peace in the world. It is true, we can't do everything, but each one of us can do something. We can all be responsible. Mary's responsible, we see right after this scene, for her first act is to go to Elizabeth, her relative, who's also expecting. So today, let us see Mary as the one who gives us an example of how we are to live our Christian life, to be those people who are attentive to how God is always doing something new, not to shy away from the extraordinary that we are asked to do in life, but see it as an honor. But also to have a sense of responsibility. Responsibility for creation, responsibility for peace in our world, responsibility for peace in our city, for our families. And realize that when we act that way, we're going to then be open to receiving the Lord this Christmas day 
because we'll be just like the first one who welcomed him into the world, his dear mother. Let us intercede through her in these holy days that we may be more like her, attentive, unafraid of a challenge, and responsive. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Mary teaches us to trust that God fulfills his promises beyond all of our imaginings, and so with confidence we offer these petitions. That the uncertainties of life may never leave us fearful or discouraged, but rather become moments for us to more eagerly put our lives in the hands of God, trusting that we will never be abandoned, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That world leaders may, may, may seek ways of peace in the midst of conflicts and reject war as a solution to our problems, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that the Christ child will be close to all expectant parents and their newborns, preserving their good health and making the birth of all children a cause of joy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who mourn the loss of loved ones in the past year may be comforted with the hope this holy season offers, that God is faithful to his promise of eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, may we approach these days celebrating the birth of your Son with a deeper trust in your promises, so that, like Mary, we too may always be ready to say your will be done, which we ask in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for all the oracles of the prophets foretold him. The Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed, his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that we may, he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, thrones, dominions, all the host, the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, my brother bishops, the clergy, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, especially those who have died in this past year. All who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, Blessed Apostles, all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
an act of spiritual communion. My dear Jesus, I believe that you are present in this most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you, unite myself wholly to you. Never allow me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Again, it's a pleasure to be with you. Please uh, look at the uh, website of the Archdiocese of Chicago, archchicago.org, uh, for information about masses uh, that are being broadcast at Midnight Mass, as, al as well as my Mass on Christmas morning. And again, I encourage, uh, if possible, for you to join your parish community on Christmas Day. We find it a great joy in making sure that we're together on such a happy and beautiful feast. A blessed holiday season to you, a blessed Christmas, uh, and we look forward to celebrating with you in the days ahead. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Oi, come, oi, come, Emmanuel, and run some captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. Three joys, three joys, Emmanuel shall come to you, Israel.